Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another video. Today we're going to get started on the AX Toys Dinosaur Battle T-Rex. I have the red version. Now, you may have seen Toy Bro and just already reviewed theirs. I'm late to the game because I've been away, but I'm back again. So, I want to start by saying this guy is gigantic uh, and it takes a lot to kind of fit it in. So if I have some camera angle trouble, please bear with, but I got to say, this is pretty dope. This, this guy is pretty dope. I can't front. <clears throat> and it's one of those things where... I've liked the AX Toys stuff so far, but now with some Kylab additions, I'm getting to the point where I'm getting luxury dinosaurs and really cool wares, and I don't know what to do with myself. So, this guy can look straight, but I had him looking off into a cool pose, so you can see that side profile as well. And they've definitely adjusted the necks, so that way there is a lot more room for growth, movement, and actual, like, like proper movement. So, I'm here for it. As you can see, we have our humanoid torso but we still have those dinosaur like head and legs and it's really spectacular to kind of see this guy even on a side profile looking really really good now i'm gonna let you know honestly i am not going to strip off these parts and the reason why i'm not going to strip them off because this is how he came out the box and i want to show how he looks fresh out the box as i begin to add accessories after because he does come with a lot of stuff and it seems intimidating but i'm going to walk you through it because all of this stuff is actually still removable, removable if you still want a basic clean dinosaur. But if you don't and you want an armored dinosaur like me and you want to go crazy, we're going to do that as well. Now, as you can see, oh wait, did that just like a flood? Oh, ho, ho, oh, ho. all right, I didn't know he could do that, sorry. That kind of threw me for a loop. So, when we lift our arms up, we actually get a little bit of length extra in the torso. And as you can see here, even though we are on single joints, he can actually hold and prop up the weight of his body and his arms which for a toy is a big deal because sometimes they actually start leaning down and but now nah, he's into it he's into all of that stuff he's got it so as you can see here that torso kind of comes down we do have a little bit of a forward butterfly joint as we rotate the arm it looks a little bit better as you rotate properly as you can see with that joint there we have our single joint the clothing does not get in the way we have a beautiful ball joint like shf or anything like that it looks really solid right as far as our torso go, let's check out the movement of our torso. Like, we don't get a crazy forward crunch, but we get just enough, especially for our head to move up and down. So that means, hopefully, because this will hinder you in terms of your forward ab like movement, right? So as you can see, our leg doesn't go really far up. So that's one big bummer. We don't get a lot of forward leg articulation, but we do have double jointed knees. Which means certain poses will be able to get a lot easier, as well as a thigh swivel. This guy has a lot of lower movement. I think the only thing hindering it is that he can't move his legs really far forward. But he does have really strong joints to the point where I actually have to use real strength for it. Like, like I'm sweating a little because I use a little bit of effort and it's really hot. If I turn my AC on, you'll never hear me ever again. <laughs> but what's really cool is we do have individual toes that articulate. I don't know if you guys are getting all of this beautifulness, but I do love that, as well as a really strong ankle pivot. Now, it's not going to be one that rotates crazy well. Oh, I was wrong. It does rotate crazy well. See? I was wrong, y'all. I was wrong. So we have that ankle movement. So that means if you want to start getting them down to hold down poses, I don't think that's going to be an issue long term. But I, these dinosaur battle figures are really dope in a sense of... If you wanted just cool dinosaurs, cool. If you wanted armored dinos with a sword, also cool. You have all of that. Because look how this guy easily just kind of looks crazy intimidating. Like I said, at just a side profile. I can see why I just wanted the black one. Because now he's all out here looking cool with his cool dinosaur poses. Like I was saying, I wanted to pop off the neck now. Because I want to show you. With the original one, they had some issues with the neck. But as you can see, they left room here to kind of help you rotate and talk about that the jaw opens up to a wide hinge i really feel like oh that was sharp i really feel like i'm holding on to something that really captivates that that dinosaur in your childhood you know what i mean and i really like this side profile i kind of want to keep him like this it just looks really really good now with all of that being said we have these beautiful straps here they fit a little loose on, but there's tabs here, as well as in the knees. We have parts here. This is actually a bloodied up piece, believe it or not. 
we have chains here we can actually untie the belt as well and we have an opening for our tail as you can see like i said that seamless really strong joints there on the backhand side i really like the effort put into this if you are a guy who loves sword and sorcery you're going to love these because it definitely adds to some crazy new lore that you may want you never know you never know but uh i'm here for this and then even with my little uh toe pivots pivots <laughs> pivots wow uh he stands strong steady long steady strong he's standing but now is the time where we're going to jump into accessories we're going to talk about all our stuff because even with all of this, we still have stuff to add on to them. So let's get to talking about it. All right, let's talk about some accessories. First, let's talk about our really cool cape. Now, this is pretty cool, but it is actually very important when attaching to your character because it's gonna be how we attach certain things. But I gotta say, man's got a really, really big cape. Like, so much so that it pretty much will drag down to the floor if you allow it. Honestly, I would attach this to a really cool, like, Doctor Doom custom. <laughs> Just because it's so cool in Regal, right? It's actually wired as well. I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's wired pretty strongly. So that way, if you want a nice flow to it, it will matter when you want to do it. And as you can see, there's going to be two hooks here, which are going to droop over our character. We'll get to that later with our hooks. And then, like I mentioned before, we're going to talk about our tail. Our tail, uh, it is bendy. It is bendy. I was worried about it not being bendy, but it is indeed bendy. It attaches to the back of our Dino King, our T-Rex, right? We're actually going to slide that up in there, which sounds awful <laughs> in retrospect, but I said it, so I, there's no taking it back. It's on camera, right? And this will actually help stabilize them in terms of like standing up in case you're having any sort of issues. Then we'll also get item holding hands. As you can see, you have two separate hands here, which will look pretty cool, but you also get your item holding hands. And it's it's pretty cool, obviously, but it's one of those things where you wonder, oh, what items am I gonna hold with it? Blah, blah, blah. You have this really, really gigantic carnivorous bleed. It has some blood splatter here at the edge of it. It's pretty nice. It's a very nice touch. There's also gonna be a slight opening here and I believe this is going to be so that way when we want to attach a larger blade, we can actually plug these two in to combine to a much larger battle sword axe, right? If you turn it upside down, it's a bladed sword. Turn it right back this way, we have a gigantic axe, which also has tons of blood added on to it. I'll be honest, like this thing is gigantic. I think the only thing competing hand-wise with it it's probably going to be anything of the ogre or troll scale. So, this this thing is big. And I'll compare it to a human character. Actually, let's do that right now. I have Conan right here on the side. And if you see, like, this thing is even way, way, way bigger than Conan, right? Next, we also have this add-on part here, which actually, when you... Let's bring this back. When you wiggle this out, you can actually have it on this piece as well. And as you see, you can make a one-handed battle axe. Or, I'm sorry, a two-handed battle axe. My apologies. I don't know why I said one-handed. <laughs> and then we have a ton and ton and ton of extra parts. So here we have our two shoulder pads, which are beautifully, beautifully made. These are very beautiful. Now, I mentioned before about these locking in to our, pizza, our pieces here. As you can see, there's openings here on the backhand side. That's going to be for going over and latching in to our backhand side of him. You're going to see an opening there. And these are going to latch in as well as with your cape. And there are a ton of other parts to do that with, but I'm going to show you those ever so briefly. There are these small pieces here. So the second part of our video, we'll get to that. But I'm going to show you all the parts first. Then we'll continue on. Then we have the parts that are going to make up our helmet. Our beautiful, beautiful helmet. There's an opening latch piece here. You don't have to always actually attach that. We have an opening on top. Let's see if I can plug that in. But uh, we have our helmet piece. Then we have another top echelon helmet piece. Which almost means 
I almost hope that we get Triceratops here out of this because this actually looks pretty cool. We have our necklace. Here we go. We have pieces to hang off our shoulders or different other parts depending on where you want to hang these at. It depends, but obviously the guys at AX Toys love stuff dangling from things and I'm not against it. It's just not for me because I, I it's too many moving parts for me. As you see, we have another piece here, which dangles as well. And then we're going to jump into part two as I talk about these other smaller parts here. So let's get to it. All right, here to talk about more accessories. Now, now we've opened up, we have our back pieces. These are going to latch into the back of our shoulder pads. We also have very, very more small, <laughs> more small, more small, blah, 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 more small tiny parts here. You can attach these in various different ways. Whether you wanted to make them change or more chain or more accessories, you can. Then we also have more stoppers. Now the stoppers I actually like because in case you wanted to plug in portholes in that small tiny bag, you actually have these to fill in. They are fillers. And I love these because it's one of those things where I don't know what to do with some tiny small parts. So it helps me by wanting to just fill things in with fillers, which will help me out immensely as I try to figure out like where stuff goes. So the fillers help me handle all of that where I don't have to, oh, where does this go? What does this do? Why do I have to attach this? You have fillers. Now, for instance, if you wanted to attach one of the shoulder parts here, I'm actually going to bring his back backwards. What I do is usually I slide through first one of the shoulder pads, and then I attach this way. And the reason why I do it this way is because it actually slides in a lot easier that way. I actually got it in almost instantly by doing that and fits right over the shoulder with no problem and the reason why I do that is because the tape attaches to these parts a lot easier when you do that because they're supposed to ride right over the shoulder so let's do that for the next one right which is actually going to just fill this in and now we have a look of a dyno with his shoulder pads looking utterly fantastic. And like I said, finding the hooks for these sometimes gets a little difficult, but it actually latches in here. Well, I might have some trouble finding it myself. Hold on. Oh, it looks like I'm having trouble myself. So I'm going to double check my instructions because I may be wrong here and we're going to come back to that but I do like this look a lot and like I said if you wanted to hang stuff off the neck like I said here we are and this is actually adjustable as well like I said fills in some of that chest space as you saw there now let's say you wanted to dangle some ornaments off like I said before here you are, showing you some examples. And this is what I was saying about the AX stuff. It's very indigenous, and I like that a lot. I like the feel of it. Makes me feel good. <laughs> I like that if you want to dress them up, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. And I like that when in doing that, it kind of gives everyone a different look at different things that they want. I've also attached the horns to the Triceratops head. And just in case you feel like you're having trouble, the porthole in the front tabs into this part, right? If you feel like it's not tabbing all the way in, that's totally fine. It is a little gummy, so don't feel too bad about it. It should press in against it. And you should be able to just pop it on his head. And if that doesn't work, you can just place the regular helmet on and then smush down. I know I have some trouble with it at first as well, but it should be something that you can get over. You can also contact AX Toys. I'm pretty sure they're going to let you know how to do it as well. But with that being said, I do want to take the time to jump into size comparisons. I don't want to make this too much. And I do want to come back and visit some stuff once I've mastered it, which I hopefully I can add at the end of the video. 
So in the meantime, let's get to it. Just to add before the size comparison, I figured I would add my cape to the back of my necklace. And then when I add the shoulder pads back in, I would gladly just go through the shoulder pads to hide that. So that's my little way out of it. So hopefully that helps you guys. I didn't see anything in the instructions about how to attach the cape. So that's what I am working with as I can just attach it to the back. I'm also going to contact Jess, but I want to make sure I get some videos out. So see you guys in a sec. Now on the way to the size comparison. This one gets a little tricky because I don't think I have everything out to compare to, but I'm going to try. So bear with me. I want to compare first off to the other dinosaur battlefield stuff that's been released. Here are two of the other figures that have released. And as you can see, We've come a long way. We started off with a really long neck, didn't really move, but I really love the attention to detail. And then here we are with the improved neck and improved articulation and way more add-on parts, cool things. And here we have our big boy riding in the streets out here, gang ganged up. Like we've really only continued to make improvements and that's kind of fun as you watch a line grow. So I don't know if you guys enjoy that, but I, I like that kind of stuff. So. With that being said, let's take these guys away and jump into the next bit of stuff. One of the cool things that I want to compare to is Spiro Toys. Here's Lexion, which I actually, he's going to get reviewed next because I've been trying to get back into the groove of things. Here we are with a normal Mythic Legions, Barbarian. And as you can see, this guy is not small in any case of the manner. Whether it's length or width, the guy is a gigantic roadblock in your way, ready to beat you up. And I love it. So everybody has a lot to look forward to in getting beat up by him. Single joint or not. Now, if you want to compare some smaller guys, here is a Mythic Legions Dwarf. And then here we are. I'm going to put my main man Conan in there because I've been kit bashing some Conan parts. So here we are with a Conan. And then even if you put Conan, look, look, look. Look how much small. Like, these guys are tiny compared to this guy. Like really, really tiny. <laughs> so... It's going to be fun to do some photos with that. Unfortunately, I do not have any of my ogre scale stuff out right now, but I'm going to attempt to find some and add photos of it. But let's talk about smaller figures while we're here. Here we are with an SH Figure Arts Akira Dante, aka Kamen Rider Birth. Then we have like a Marvel Legends uh, Crossfire. Then we have a Jada Toys Phelon. As you can see, all these guys. Are tiny in comparison to him if you want to throw in some other stuff just to double check here is Valiverse which is a slightly larger figure undercover condor and then uh, oh because this guy is so big and I want to put a comparison out there right here is 118 scale uh, Warhammer figure and the reason why that is I put them in there because you can cross your lines up with this if you want smaller figures to look crazy and smaller, like here we are with a battle sister, even in a mech suit for her, as you can see, she doesn't compare to the dino. So that's one of the things I wanted to talk about because it does look really cool when you cross over your lines, right? Even if we did like this 118th scale werewolf, right? Look at that, still smaller than him. Which just reminded me, now I want to do another add-on. <laughs> and now I'm going to find an ogre scale because I want to do like the other stuff, like the Maestro Union stuff to compare to. So I'll see you guys in a second before we like really finish off this video. All right, back to the size comparison. We're going to do a little extra add-on here. Now, what's really cool about this is I forgot other sword and sorcery lines where we have stuff like the Zestray Studios. These guys are a little bigger, but even they are tiny in comparison to the AX Battle Dinosaur stuff, right? And then we have the Polar Bear, right? And this big boy is probably the only one that can really compete with this other big guy here. So hopefully I can make those guys do battle. We'll see how that works out. And last but not least, I said I would do it. Here is an Ogre Scale from Cosmic Legion that I had because I actually planned on reviewing this guy. I still need to learn their names, but... This is one of the few guys who, in terms of height, can compete. And uh, yeah, there you have it. Now, like I said, it's really cool because I don't normally get a chance to do cool stuff like this. So it's actually really, really exciting. And I'm hoping that other people kind of like latch on to this. So I'm, it's really going to be enjoyable. 
Hope you guys enjoy the photos. And if you, obviously, I'm not the first person to review it. Please check out Jeff Hernandez and Toy Bros reviews. I appreciate those guys. They're my brothers in arms when it comes to sword and sorcery and really cool shit. So please check them out. As always, please guys, be good, do good, drink water, guys. Let's go.